In the worldwide war against crime, there are men and women trained to sink their own identity in the international underworld. They work alone, in danger and in shadow, unrecognized by friend and enemy alike. They are the operators of the almost legendary Ghost Squad. Talkative tonight. Hmm? Oh, sorry, darling. How did the paper go? Paper? The one you read at Colton's today. Oh, that. All right. Except that some of the Iron Curtain boys seem to think they knew more about the subject than I did. Hmm? What was the subject? Does it matter? Sorry, dear. Hate phenomena in space capsules re entering the atmosphere. Ah, look at that idiot. People like that shouldn't be allowed on the road. David, what is the matter with you? Gave the right signal. I haven't been drinking, have you? No, 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 I'm all right. David, something is wrong. What is it? Caroline, I have a nasty feeling that British science is about to lose one of its most distinguished figures. What are you talking about? I'm afraid I've made a damn fool of myself. Oh, David, something has happened. Stop the car and tell me. I might as well, I suppose. You'll be affected too when the storm breaks. This was no ordinary accident. Sir David Andrews was the world's most distinguished metallurgist. He was doing top secret research at the government weapons establishment at Longdown. At the end of the week, he was to lay the results of his research before NATO in Paris. His car had been tampered with. All this pointed one way, attempted assassination. Yes? Chief, Sir William Hallows, Security of Defense. I was told to expect him. All right, but I, I can't promise anything. What are his chances, Doctor? We've had to do massive skin grafting overnight. It's hopeless, really, but it's the only thing we could do. He managed to say anything? No. No, he's been unconscious since they brought him in. Evening, Stark. Good evening. I've told you. How? How is he, Doctor? It's just a matter of waiting. And uh, Lady Caroline? She died on the operating table. Poor David. Uh, where can I have a private word with Mr. Stock? Here, if you like. Uh, but I'd like the nurse to stay. Uh, ring me if he shows me a change, please. Thank you. Well? Well, Sir William, it looks as though somebody didn't want him to take his secrets to NATO, doesn't it? Foreign agent, presumably. Eh? I find that very hard to accept. Why? Sir David did all his research work by himself in a special security lab within the establishment, alone. Apart from half a dozen top people at NATO, he was the only person in the world who knew what he was at. You don't believe that he himself could have... No, uh... no, no, I don't. He is uh, a great scientist and a public figure. I know him personally. To me, he's utterly above suspicion. Wasn't he on this international science conference in London? Yes, he was. There are people there from behind the Iron Curtain, I believe. These scientists often chat informally. He might have said something unguarded. Might as well accuse the Prime Minister. I, I can't believe that anybody could have found out about that secret project of his. Well, it looks as though somebody not only could, but did. It's my job to find out who it was. Well, if you're right, Stock, I'm not the judge of men I thought I was. David N. I just can't believe it. But Sir David Andrews must have talked about his secret to someone. We felt pretty sure it was somebody at the International Scientific Conference. So we got in touch with the president, Professor Julian Baker. He was professor of mathematics at a provincial university. And he was also Sir David's brother-in-law. Professor Baker, chief. How do you do? Good evening, come, Professor. 
I think you're a very busy man. Well, I'm afraid I haven't very much time. The conference, you know, and then the funeral. Oh, do sit down, please. We'll be as quick as we can. Have you any idea why I asked you to come here? Uh, is it about the accident? It's a terrible thing. Caroline, Lady Andrew, she, she was my sister, you know. You have our deepest sympathies, Professor. I can't understand it. David was always the most careful driver. I don't doubt that for a moment. Now, this international conference, how many delegates are there exactly? Oh, well, I don't know exactly. Oh, about 300? Uh, why? It's on for a week, isn't it? Four more days, actually. Hmm, that doesn't give us much time. Time? I don't quite... What do you mean? Professor, we want to make some rather delicate inquiries about some of the delegates, and we very much appreciate your help. But what's all this got to do with David's accident? I'm afraid this will come as a shock, but it wasn't an accident. It was attempted assassination. This brake cable was taken from your brother-in-law's car after the crash. It was deliberately cut before he got into it last night. How on earth could anyone have... Not difficult, I'm afraid. His car was left unattended all day in the hotel car park while he was at the conference. So Caroline was murdered. Oh, no, I can't believe it. Well, it was Sir David they were out. But who would want to murder David? He's a world-famous scientist. He's no enemies. You didn't know he was doing secret work for the government. Secret? No. I still don't Your brother-in-law made an extensive advance in weapons research. Someone tried to kill him before he could brief NATO. Oh, good heavens. Now, do you know if he talked to anyone at the conference? In private, I mean. Yes, yes, he talked to lots of people. Foreign delegates? Well, why not? That's what they're here for. Science is international, you know. Official secrets aren't. You know, look here. Are you trying to suggest that my brother-in-law has given away official secrets? He was the only person who knew about this official secret. That's absolutely preposterous. Well, doesn't it strike you that Sir David might have been, well, uh, indiscreet? Indiscreet to who? That's what we want to find out, with your help. But, my dear chap, you're making a most appalling mistake. Well, if we are, it means that somebody tried to kill him for personal reasons. And you say yourself he had no enemies. What do you want me to do? Well, first of all, say nothing about the crash to anyone. We're keeping that secret for the time being. Then I'd like you to keep a lookout for a late arrival at the conference. A physicist from Canada named Dr. Desmond O'Neill. O'Neill? Oh, I don't think I know him. Uh... Yes, you do. This is Dr. O'Neill. Really? Oh, oh I see. Extraordinary. Uh, extraordinary, mind you chaps have. Is it really necessary to be quite so melodramatic? Uh, well, I must get back to the conference. I hope you won't be bored. Let's see now, there's a paper on anti-pest virus that might interest you. Uh, well, I'll be there, Professor. No, I'm sure you're wrong about all this. Quite wrong, quite wrong. Goodbye. Well, thank you. Oh, yes, not at all. Thank you. Three hundred delegates. It's going to be a tall order, Chief. Not at all as it might have been. Security report that Andrews was seen talking privately with a Russian delegate yesterday afternoon. There are only 20 Russian delegates. And one Canadian. 20 to 1. You've played longer shots at the races. And they never came in, sir. Now, this one's going to. It's got to. The conference had taken over the Wedgwood Hotel in Bloomsbury. Operator Gene Carter was installed at the hotel switchboard to filter any calls that might bring us a lead. I checked in as Dr. O'Neill of Montreal University, physicist and hoped nobody would ask me about the second law of thermodynamics. Owing to successive short range migration movements during the spring, we must also take into account the preferences of the parasite for the various species of the sun. I spent all afternoon in the ballroom listening to a paper on selective pest killers, but it didn't get me any closer to the killer who tried to assassinate Sir David Andrews. Oh, 
Professor Baker? Huh? I'm sorry I'm late, but my plane was delayed. Oh, did you come far? In Montreal. I'm uh, Dr. O'Neill. O'Neill! So oh, bless my soul, of course. Uh, Monsieur Roger. Well, comment de vous, monsieur. How do you do? I enjoyed your interesting paper. Oh, they're très gentil. Mais pardon, mon mon, s'il vous plaît. Is there anyone else you'd specially like to meet? Uh, well, Sir David Andrews. We were together recently as observers at Cape Canaveral. I'm afraid Sir David isn't with us today. Well, that's too bad. I missed hearing him read his paper yesterday. Uh, on heat phenomena, yes. Now, let me see. Who was here yesterday? Uh... Mr. Mr. President. Oh, Rodney. Now, you don't know O'Neill, do you? Professor Rodney of the Russian Academy. Dr. O'Neill. Glad to meet you, Professor. How do you do? I heard you are interested in Sir David Andrews' paper. Of course. He's your man, O'Neill. Rodney will tell you about it. He was here. Great. Yeah. Let's sit down over here. Yes, certainly. <coughs> Professor? Thank you. I'm afraid I'll have to give you a few words of warning, mm. Dr. O'Neill. It is not good. What do you mean? This paper doesn't give me any satisfaction at all. And all his ideas are all dated by the recent development in the Soviet Union, for instance. Well, you'd, you'd better take that um, up with Sir David. I'm afraid I'm just a beginner. As a matter of fact, I tried. I spoke to him yesterday when he was leaving the hall, but he's a very arrogant man. He didn't want to talk to you? No. He just waved me aside and went off to a reception. What reception? One of the silly parties that are running in our hotel all day long. Different arranged by the delicate groups. Nothing but chatting. Science is not taken seriously in the West. Well, maybe he had to meet someone. Then to discuss something. <laughs> What a metallurgist like Andrews had to discuss with an agricultural scientist of Central America. Who? Dr. Ibanez. I found Andrews there lately at that stupid Central American party. He was drinking and talking to various people whose work could not be of any interest to him at all. But to me, his colleague. <laughs> he said nothing to you uh, about anything. He said something about weather, that's all. Hmm. Doesn't sound like Sir David. What do you talk about to the Central Americans? Well, how should I know? Perhaps they discuss different merits of Scotch whiskey and tequila. Tequila? I beg your pardon, Doctor. I'm joking. I don't know what they talked about. Well, the bit about tequila interested me. I've had it in Mexico. Pretty strong. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very. It reminds me of the inferior Russian vodka. Well, I believe vodka makes people pretty talkative, too. <laughs> Next time when I meet Andrews, I'll offer him some. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you happen to see him first before I do, here are the points about I'm the electronics. I'm sorry, Professor. Maybe we can take it up at a later date. But if you'll excuse me, I have to make a call. Oh, certainly. Yes, yes. Number, please. Never mind. I want you to get a security check on a Dr. Ibanez. Doesn't sound a very odd and cutting name to me. It isn't. It's Spanish. Central American Spanish. Dr. Ibanez is some kind of agricultural scientist. And he had a party in the hotel last night. Sir David was there. You think that's where he did his talking? Mm, could be. Nonetheless, I want a background on Dr. Ibanez and the facts. Security, please. <laughs> Uh, bring Dr. Abanez in room 502. I think that's Dr. Abanez over there, sir. Thank you. Dr. Abanez. Senor, I'm Dr. Abanez. Oh, well, really. Good evening, Doctor. I'm Dr. O'Neill, Montreal University. Mm -hmm. This is Dr. Diaz, Dr. Sanchez. How do you do? How do you do? I wonder if you can help me. I'm uh, looking for a friend of mine. Do I know him, or is it perhaps a she? I'm afraid it's a he. May I? I think I saw you at the pest control session this afternoon. Yes, yeah, a very interesting paper, I thought. You are a chemist? I uh, know, a physicist. Not quite in your line, I'm afraid. Well, I'm an agronomist, but I have taught physics. You have? Yes, I studied under Professor Spearman, also a Canadian. Spearman? He's uh, one of the greats. You mean he was? Spearman died three years ago. Yes, I know, but his work lives on. Who is this friend you are looking for, Dr. O'Neill? Sir David Andrews. We were together at Canaveral. Sir David Andrews? No, oh, I'm afraid I don't know him. Well, he was at your reception last night, wasn't he? I'm afraid you have been misinformed, Dr. O'Neill. Oh. Well, there was a Russian there. 
Back at the mission, Brodney. If you want to find your friend, why not look up his number in the telephone book? A prominent man like that is sure to be listed. Will you excuse us, please? Anything? Yeah. Scientists are no better at lying than anybody else. I just met a Banyas. And? Well, she says he wasn't there. And Brodney says Sir David was there. And that makes one of them a liar. Well, it could be a Banyas. We've got a dossier on her. Listen to this. Consuela Ibanez, age 38, top agricultural expert, has visited Moscow, Warsaw, Prague, and Sofia in the last two years. Active at home in left-wing politics. Enjoys the full confidence of her government, which is not, repeat, not sympathetic to NATO. Yeah, well, you could say the same of Brodney's a Russian. Well, I'd stick to Abanyas if I were you. Sir David Andrews was at her party. How do you know? So that waiter I'd just been talking to, he served the drinks at the party. He says Andrews and Professor Baker came in together during the evening. Well, does he know if Andrews had talked to anybody? Well, not particularly. He was very busy. But he did notice one thing. Towards the end of the party, Andrews and Professor Baker had an argument. Andrews and the professor? What about? They didn't hear. But he did say that Andrews seemed to be pretty angry, waving his arms about, and the professor seemed to be trying to pacify him. Where are you going? Professor Baker. No. No, there's to be no notice in the newspapers. It's just a private burial in the family grave, yes. Oh, ghastly business. Yes, I'll tell you. Yes, I'll let you know about the arrangements later, yes. Oh, come in. Thanks for ringing. Professor Baker, why didn't you tell me that you and Sir David had an argument at Dr. Ibanez's party last night? Well, you... you didn't ask me. That's no reason for withholding vital information. Vital information? We're trying to find out who killed your sister, Professor. Yes, I know, I know, but you chaps have such extraordinary imaginations. Did you have this argument over, uh, Sir David's being indiscreet in front of foreigners? Well, no, of course not. What was it about, then? In my opinion, he was drinking too much. And that worried you? Yes. But not for the reason you think. Sir David was going to drive home, you see, and my sister was going to be in the car. Now, I'd warned David to go carefully with that Latin American drink because he was unfamiliar with it. You mean he got angry with you just because you advised him to go easy on the liquor? <laughs> now, look here, Mr. Craig, drunk or sober, David would never have lost control. Not but enough to give away vital secrets. That's just an opinion, Professor. I only wish you could talk to him yourself for five minutes. You'd soon see the sort of man he is. <coughs> yes. Yeah. I see. Yes, I'll come at once. Thank you. Well, that was the hospital. They say Sir David is regaining consciousness. Perhaps I can have that five-minute talk with him after all. Uh. Let you stay a couple of minutes, I'm afraid. Well, thank you, Doctor. Sir David, can you hear me? I want to ask you. <coughs> no, let questions. me. He, he knows my voice. David, this is Julian. Where's Caroline? Do you remember that reception last night? Dr. Evans. Evans? Ask him if he talked to anyone. Now, David, try to think. This is terribly important. Could anyone at that reception have tampered with your car? <coughs> oh, sorry. Did you talk to anyone today, David, about your work? No. <coughs> Are you quite sure? <coughs> Nothing. There. Are you satisfied? No. Sir David. Sir 
Hello. Speaking. No, Chief. Nothing. Well, I've got something. Just come in. I want you to put this to him. Yes, sir. Right. Right, sir. I'll ask him and I'll call you back. Sir David. Just one more question. Sir David. He's unconscious again, I'm afraid. Damn. You asked me a moment ago if I was satisfied. I'm afraid I'm not. Oh. Why, what's happened? Do the words magic bullet mean anything to you? No. Well, a message containing those two words was sent from someone in London to an agent on the continent. A man who's known to be working for various Central American governments. Magic bullet were the only two words that could be unscrambled, but it was enough. Well, what's it mean? Well, magic bullet is the code name for Sir David's secret project. A rifle bullet with a nuclear warhead. Nobody knew about it except Sir David. Until last night in room 502. Takes a good photograph, doesn't she, Chief? What we're after is evidence, not looks. Have the CID come up with anything? No. Public car park, anybody could have slipped in. Well, maybe Gene will turn up with somebody at the hotel switchboard. Yeah. Oh, good morning, Mr. Good morning. morning. Good of you to come, Professor. Do sit down. Thank you. Professor? How is Sir David? Oh, he's still on the danger list. Unconscious, I'm afraid. Mm. Well, there are just a couple more things we'd like your help on. Uh, do you know if you'd ever met Dr. Barnett before this party? Uh, not that I know of. Did his work ever take him to Central America? Uh, no, never. So they just met casually at the conference. What sort of a man is Sir David? Is he at all egotistical? Well, he, he, he's no false modesty. You mean if he had done something he was pleased with, he didn't keep it to himself? We left to let the world know about it. He does rather revel in the limelight. I'm talking about his ordinary work, of course. Uh, this secret thing. Well, of course, I don't... I can't imagine him ever shouting about that from the house stops. He probably didn't have to. We believe there was a leak at NATO, and Dr. Ibana's government ordered her to follow it up, get a look at his notes if possible. But it wasn't possible because they're in a safe at the research establishment. So she did the next best thing. She, uh, she pumped him, you mean? Yes. And he must have told her something. Perhaps just enough for her to gauge the size of the thing he was on. But why should she want to kill him? Dog in the manger. If the side she was on couldn't have it, all she could do was to stop NATO getting it. Huh. Well, I suppose you'll arrest her, will you? Well, Professor, we could have the three of them deported today, but it would cause a diplomatic incident, and it wouldn't be good enough. We want evidence connecting them with the crime, and that won't be easy to get. Well, I'm afraid I can't see your problem. Looked at from a purely logical point of view, the thing is very simple. Have you got a mathematical answer for this, Professor? Uh, not mathematical. <laughs> have you ever done any duck shooting? I never had the time, I'm afraid. Uh, pity. Uh, wild duck is a very cautious bird, you know. If you want to shoot it, you have to lure it with another duck. The dummy, you mean? A decoy. Now, if Dr. Ibanez could be made to believe that someone was carrying on Sir David's work for NATO, then I think, by your reasoning, she might also feel compelled to try and assassinate that person, too. Now, don't you feel that's a little melodramatic? Uh, highly, highly. Can you think of a better plan? Well, as a matter of fact, it's the way we thought of trying ourselves. Craig here will be our decoy. Dr. O'Neill has already made it known that he was associated with Sir David at Cape Canaveral. Oh, well, that'll never do. These people aren't going to be taken in as easily as that. They're scientists. We're not hired assassins. Oh, no, no, we've got to be a lot more convincing than that. No! I shall be your decoy, Duck. You? <laughs> now, I'm sorry, Professor. It's much too big a risk. Oh, I realize the risk. They try to kill Caroline, they'll try to kill me. Then they might do just that, too. At least I've been trained to take care of myself. Oh, thank you for the offer. You're a brave man. Oh, no, no, Mr. Stock. I, I've lived my life such as it is. We were very close, my sister and I. And if I can bring them to justice, that's all I ask. Oh, I can appreciate your feelings, Professor, but... I tell uh... you, without me, you'll get nowhere. Mr. Craig, you know, he, he didn't altogether impress me as a physicist. And in any case, how do we know that Dr. Ibanez hasn't checked up and found out there is no um, uh, Dr. O'Neill of Montreal University? Yeah, he's got a point there, Chief. She might have done just that. Very well.
But I shall have to insist on Craig staying with you day and night in case something goes wrong. Uh, that's settled then. Right. Well, phase one, I'll leave to you. But I want to put about that Sir David has died as a result of his accident yeah. and that you are going to carry on with his secret work. Yes, and uh, phase two... A routine security check for you and then a pantomime in which you will play the leading role. I'll brief you in your part later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, we better be going. Uh, now then, I might, I might make an announcement from the platform this morning. And Mr. Craig must keep a sharp lookout. I think he might see something interesting. Give Mr. William Hallows, Minister of Defence. to assemble here this morning before splitting up into your various committees because I have an announcement, uh, a very sad announcement to make. Uh, Sir David Andrews, one of this country's most distinguished scientists, has died as the result of a motoring accident. Now, <coughs> his tragic death makes it necessary for me uh, to hand over the remainder of this conference to your Vice President as I have been asked to carry on certain uh, government work that Sir David was engaged upon, work that will take me abroad in a few days' time. Now, please accept my sincere apologies, but you see, it is a matter of utmost urgency. Thank you. Messieurs, the conference commences à nouveau après le déjeuner. Well, I think they heard what you said, sir. Well, now, phase two. Hmm? Right. Phase two was a complete reversal of accepted cloak and dagger principles. We wanted the suspects to be in no doubt about the situation, so we made a big parade of escorting the professor to Long Down. Sir William Hallows and the Defense Ministry Undersecretary went with him. He was passed into the establishment, ostensibly to pick up Sir David's notes. Actually, we had prepared dummies. Meanwhile, we hired a safe for the dummy notes and had it taken to the professor's suite under a very obvious security guard. A new lock was put on the professor's door. Police and security men made a big show of protecting the professor when he got back. The press, who had got wind of something, were given the brush off. It was now that Professor Baker sprang his big surprise. Uh, Stock, I've had the inspiration of a lifetime. We're going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm sorry we couldn't let you know sooner, Stock. But the Ministry uh, have decided to let Professor Baker have the original notes. Those are Sir David's real notes? Uh, don't worry. We've had him cleared for security. All we want him to do is to make a report for NATO on those notes, which he says he thinks he can do. Oh, yes, but child's play. Child's play. Now, Stock, don't you believe those people who tell us that we mathematicians are all dreamers? We can apply theoretical work as well as the practical fellows but that's not the point, Professor. This makes you a bigger security risk than ever. Sorry to be a nuisance, my dear chap, but my duty is quite clear. I've got to see that David work gets the people it was intended for in a fall they can understand. Uh, they are agitating stock. They want this report in two days' time. You see, on our way down to Longdown, uh, Professor Baker offered to work on it. And as soon as I could ring out the permanent secretary, he jumped at the chance. But here in the hotel? <laughs> We should have preferred him to work at the establishment. Oh, no, 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 we couldn't have that. Oh, if I'm to be a decoy, I've got to be accessible. I, I drove a hard bargain. Your professor's <laughs> a strong character. Well, Craig, it looks as though you've got two valuable properties to look after. The professor and the notes. 
Stay with him. Don't leave his side for a single split second. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, don't worry. I got some of my men in the hotel. He's quite safe. I hope so. All the same, hadn't we better put the minister in the picture? It's all laid on. And my car's down below, if you're ready. Right. After you. Well, Professor? Looks like we're going to be roommates for the next 48 hours. Uh, oh, yes. You will have to find some way to sleep. Uh, Don't worry about me. I won't be doing much sleeping. I don't understand it, Cosuela. What is going on? I know as much as you do. They've taken the guard away from his door, but Dr. O'Neill is still with him. I see. Well, they're probably working together. O'Neill was a colleague of Andrews. Oh, but uh, there's something else, Consuela. O'Neill telephoned and booked a professor on a plane for Paris. Uh -huh. When for? Tomorrow night. Hey, I thought so. We have very little time. Well, Sanchez, I think you'd better go to the consulate. It's a risk, I know. But we must get a message through direct. Huh? Si, si, Consuela. Well, Professor, two and a half hours to go, and still no wild duck. I beg your pardon? We've been here two days and nothing's happened. Your decoy idea seems to have misfired. Yes, I, I wonder if we haven't overdone the see, security protection. We've taken the guard off the door. Still, all those policemen downstairs disguised as porters, we, we might have frightened them off. Could be. My guess is they'll take a crack at you on the way to the airport. Huh? Oh, you really think so? Don't worry, Professor. You'll be well looked after. Now, I was pretty good at math when I was in school, but those figures look like a Chinese bridge school. Oh, yes, it's a bit tricky. I think I've unscrambled it. I've got a whole plan of a magic bullet and uh, a perfect construction plan of the entire strength of material. Now then, not bad, eh? Well, I feel like I've been guarding Fort Knox single-handed. <laughs> Dr. O'Neill speaking. Stuck here. Anything happened? Well, it may any minute. Security report that one of the Central Americans spent two hours with their consul today. He's on his way back to the hotel now. Right. Well, it looks like they've got their instructions, Professor. Let's huh? get some of this stuff in the safe. Oh, yes. Uh, well, that's it. Number, please. 610. Hold the line, I'll put you through. Good evening, Professor Baker. Yes, speaking. Uh, who is it, please? It's Dr. Vibanis. She wants to see me. Uh, oh, certainly, Doctor. Uh, yes, I'll be quite alone, yes. Uh, see you presently, then. Mm, yes, sit down behind your desk and don't move. What are you doing? Well, she knocks on your door. If you go to answer it, she can shoot you at point blank range. Now, the best thing for you to do is stay behind your desk. Pretend like you're working, writing. You feel okay? Well, it's what we've been waiting for, isn't it? Good for you, Professor. I don't know what she'll try to pull. Probably a gun. But uh, don't worry, I'll keep you covered at all times. Come in. The door, Professor? Not very good security. Just to make certain. You have so many policemen guarding you. What is it you want, Doctor? Where is your colleague, Dr. O'Neill? He'll be back in a minute. Well, Professor, this won't take long. So you are off to Paris? My plane leaves at 8.30. I see. Well, I'm afraid this is goodbye. Down, Professor. Drop the flag, Doctor. Do all Canadian scientists carry guns, Dr. O'Neill? I wouldn't know, Doctor. I'm a policeman. Let's have a look in that bag, shall we? 
You are looking for something? Why did you come to see Professor Baker? I and my colleagues are leaving for home by air tonight. The conference is over. I came to say goodbye to the president. Please tell me, did I do something wrong? My uh, apologies, doctor. Professor Baker is under security protection. We have to take all precautions. I understand, but may I give the professor what I was about to hand him when you interrupted me? What is it? My address card. Well, goodbye, professor. And bon voyage. Same to you, doctor. I'm so sorry about this. Oh, please don't worry. Such things also happen in my country. Adios, Dr. O'Neill. Well, Professor, it looks like we've been barking up the wrong tree. I don't know. She may just have been testing the ground, trying to... Lull us into a false sense of security. Maybe. You think it may be someone else? I think we'll know before you catch your plane tonight. Right. I want you to hold back all the passengers on the 830 Paris plane in search of the internet. You think they might try a time bomb? I think they'll try anything. It'll be tricky to cover him without making it look too obvious, but we're doing all we can. I will relay a wireless car stuck away in side roads. Each car will follow him for about two miles and then hand over to the next car in line. All the officers are in plain clothes now. Give me the Wedgwood Hotel. Wedgwood Hotel? Right, sir. I'll pass the message on. Hotel switchboard here, sir. Your car is waiting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, we can get me control. Oh, time to be leaving, Professor. Oh. oh. Nervous? Yes, yes, just a little. Don't be. Yeah, oh, control. Right, stand by. Message reads VIP alert. Leaving hotel approximately 7.10. Right. Well, what is all that about? Well, that's your protective screening. From the moment you leave the hotel, you'll have an escort all the way to the airport. Undercover escort. Very discreet. Oh, well, I must say, in spite of all your melodrama, you chaps are pretty efficient. Well, I'm ready, I think. Well, I'll see you down in the car. Yeah. Hello. Speaking. Listen, there's a change of plan. Yes, ministerial level. They've decided it's too risky to expose both the professor and the plan, so we've got to give him maximum cover all the way. Yes, you will travel with him in the car and go with him to Paris, right? Yeah, right. Well, Professor, I'm sorry, does it... <whistles> professor! <whistles> Jean, stop at the professor when he gets out of the lift. It's just coming down now. It's not there, only a banyan. Dr. Banyan? It's all my fault. I'm sorry. When I found you weren't following behind me, I thought I'd better get on. Right, Chief. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Stark wants to know what actually happened. Well, that's what I said. I thought I'd better get on, so I, I don't like the lift. I walked down. He went on ahead, Chief, when we were on the phone. He took the stairs. They jumped him on the fifth floor. Is there any chance you saw them? No, no. They came from behind. Now, they must have chloroformed him from behind, sir. Did you hear any voices? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't feel at all well. That filthy stuff. Oh. Uh, well, he hasn't a clue, sir. That's right. Fifth floor. Thank you. Uh, your rooms were on the fifth floor, I believe. That is correct. Fairly quiet, was it? Not too much traffic noise to disturb you? No, we were very comfortable, thank you. Let me see, you left about the same time as Professor Baker, didn't you? Really no idea, senor. 
Stop. Jeffrey, stop. Uh, Senora, why do you ask us all these questions? Are you a policeman? Of a kind, yes. You didn't run into the professor as you were leaving. No, but I called on him earlier to say goodbye. He was president of our conference. Of course. Have you enjoyed your visit here? No, it has been mostly work, but it has been very interesting. I can believe that. Will you please tell us where is our luggage? It's being examined by the customs. Just a routine formality, I understand. And is it not also a routine formality that we should be there too? I have a list of things we are taking. I doubt if what I'm looking for would be on your list. I don't understand, Senor Stock. Are you suggesting we are smuggling something? Well, no. But I think you're being used. You? Used to carry something. It sometimes happens. Somebody slips contraband into another person's luggage uh, to escape detection. That seems most unfair. But what is it we are being used to carry, senor? The stolen plans of a nuclear weapon, doctor. But who would do such a thing as this? Someone acting for a foreign government, wouldn't you say? Yes, but why use us? We are going back to Central America. Who would use a thing like that over there? Your own government, perhaps? Senor, we are a small, neutral country. We have no use for nuclear weapons. We cannot afford such luxuries. Still, your country has larger friends who can, isn't that so? I know nothing of all this. All I know is you will find nothing of this kind in our luggage. I see. Well, we shouldn't have long to wait now. <laughs> Um, Justins have completed their research, sir. What about the car at the bottom here? Yeah. Been over that too, not a thing. Oh, I see. Well, I want to hold them all the same. I'm sorry, Doctor. Unfortunately, you've missed your plane and there isn't another one till tomorrow. Now, if you would accompany this gentleman, he'll see that you're made comfortable. Well, good night, senor. I hope you'll find your smuggler. Thank you. I intend to, Doctor. Give me the way to the hotel. I made an awful mess of things, haven't I? It's all my fault. I wanted to help, and now I've made things worse. Don't worry, Professor. We'll get the papers back. Yeah. Easy, Professor. Yeah, I, I think I'd like some fresh air. Do you mind if I went for a short walk? Too dangerous, I'm afraid. Oh, surely I'm not still in danger. Very much so. Whoever attacked you might try to stop you again, thinking you're going to NATO. Hey, now, look here, Craig. I've had about as much as I can stand of this. I want to get back to my university. Do you mind looking up a train? I don't feel up to driving. What about Sir David? Don't you want to be on hand? Oh, poor David. I'd almost forgotten about him. Oh, Chief. Oh. Now, have you got those documents? I think you'd better have a lie down on the bed, Professor. Don't worry. Everything's under control. Yes, thank you. That's... Thank you. Thank you. Searched all three rooms, Chief. There's not a sign of anything. Right, thank you, Carter. Well, Craig, they've been very clever. Luggage clean, rooms clean. Where do we go from here? Yes, well, I think you better have a look at this. Where'd you find this? I found it on the desk by accident, just after the professor went out. And a little while before, that Dr. Ibanez was here. Yeah, without a gun. Yeah. Well, there's only one thing for it. You just have to try and get a confession. It's not going to be easy. Sir David Andrews? Jean's been on the phone. It's only a matter of time. Well, it better be quick. I had to admit the Chief's idea just might work. It was a long shot, but worth a try. He briefed me, and I went on to the hospital to set things up. Come in. How are you feeling, cousin? Ah, a little better, thanks. Now, have you found those documents yet? Not yet. They probably got rid of them, slipped them to somebody from their consulate. You're going to arrest them, surely? They've been detained unofficially. But we need more information before we can go any further. We're going to try and get your brother-in-law to help us. David? Oh, but he's much too ill. Craig's on his way to the hospital now. The doctors have agreed to try and bring him out of his coma with a rapid blood transfusion. Look, I haven't stopped him. I'm killing him. 
I'm afraid he's going to die anyway. Come along, Professor. I'd like you to be there. No. No, no, I couldn't bear it. I couldn't watch Davy being put through some sort of third degree. I... We don't use those methods. Anyway, he'll tell us what we want to know without that. Come along, Professor. You want to get those plans back, don't you? You realize that this might not work, don't you? It's a chance we've got to take. No change, I'm afraid. He's got to be brought round, Doctor. There must be something you can do. They're pushing him to the limit as it is. He could go into heart failure at any moment. Sorry, I can't watch this. Perhaps you would like to wait outside. never face life after a scandal like this. We haven't heard his story yet. He's coming around, sir. Right. This is it. No, no I tell you, I can't stand death bed scenes. We, we were never, we were never very friendly. No, I didn't know. Oh, yes, David's a fraud. I'm sorry. He's dying, I know. Well, at least you're not a hypocrite, Professor. He's a hypocrite. Called rich, popular, practical genius. He's nothing but a plumber. Now, he gets all the credit for that research of his. But without the groundwork of a first class mathematician, he'd be nowhere. Nowhere! Which mathematician? Now, listen, Stock! Whatever he says, don't you believe a word of it? He'll say anything to safeguard that bogus reputation of his. Well, let's see what he does say, shall we? Stock! Can you hear me? I'm afraid he's dead. We couldn't have saved him. Just a minute. Give us a few moments longer. We're being watched. Wedgwood Hotel. Wedgwood Hotel? Yes, Chief, speaking. Right, I'll be waiting for him. Will you take over, please? Yes. I'm off now. Chief, a man answering his description caught the 11.5 train to London. He should be getting into Waterloo at 11.40. Right, we'll meet the train and find out from that. Monsieur le professeur, je vous dirai... Good evening, Professor. Did you forget something? Who are you? Get out of my way, please. I'll take your case. So, 
tried to keep you, Sir William. I told you had a busy night. Professor Baker has been charged with double murder, and that's what finally put us on the scent. Police are listening. Craig picked it up in the professor's room shortly before he was found chloroform. Professor Baker wrote it as a warning to Dr. Banyas that I was hiding in the bedroom. He didn't dare let her say anything incriminating in front of me. But do you mean that Baker sold her the secret? Well, he thought he had, but the deal fell through. No manufacturing facilities. That's what she had come to tell him. They couldn't talk in front of me, so when I was on the phone, he nipped out and met her in the lift. When he found out the deal was off, he must have been in a real sweat. Yeah, well, that's where this came in. But are you saying that he deliberately chloroformed himself? Well, if he wanted to sell the plans elsewhere, somehow he had to get out of flying to Paris. Fellow must have been crazy. To kill Sir David and his own sister. Well, he claims he didn't know she was going to be in the car. But why? Because Andrews overheard him doing the deal with the Barnett at the party and threatened to expose him. But, but that means that Baker must have had access to the plans even before Sir David's accident? I'm afraid so. You see, Sir David, being a perfectionist, didn't trust any of the mathematicians in the establishment. So he did the unforgivable. He went outside the security screen to his own brother-in-law. 